In this lesson, I will solve a simulation study for these wise grip simulating the internal stress developed in each component by clamping down onto a metal plate. To solve the study, local interaction will be added between components, and three pin connectors will be used to connect components together. Upon receiving the results, I will check the high stress con concentration resulting from local interactions as well as the forces placed on the pin connects. Here the wise grip pillars are clamping a piece of power stroke and are set into locked position. Before I begin creating the study, I will switch over to the for analysis configuration. In this configuration, the release lever and pin cap parts have been stressed. Since the connectors will be modeled using the simulation software, they don't need to be included in the model. First, I will create a study named Wise Grip Analysis, which will be static study. I will apply the material cast carbon steel for all the parts. I will right click on parts in the simulation tree, apply the material to all. And select cast carbon steel from the menu. Next, I need to simulate the bar stroke dead pass shown in the other assembly configuration. To do this, I will apply fixed geometry fixture to the two flat forces of the jaw. The next step is identifying and specifying which interaction type should be used in the model. To do this, I will run interference, interference detection from the velvet tab of the command manager. Before clicking the calculate button, I want to check the box for treat con coincidence as interference, which allows me to identify parts in contact. Now when I click calculate, three interference appear. I will expand each one in the result box. The interference between the center link and the screw is line contact, which will have a bonded interaction added between the two touching components. This is because these two components will remain in contact as long as the force is applied. The interference between the screw and the main grip is due to the threads engaging between the two components. The interaction will be handled with the help of the top level assembly component interaction, the global interaction. The other interference is between the main grip and the clamps, which do not move in relation to one another. This contact will also be handled using the top level assembly component interaction. Now that the contact location has been identified, I will proceed in adding the interactions. First, I will set the top level assembly interaction, the global interaction. I will expand the component interaction folder in the tree. And I can see the global interaction is already set to bonded. This is the correct contact type to make sure parts are fixed to one another globally, unless specified otherwise. However, I want to make sure these parts are meshed independently since they are separate parts that are not uh, fused together. To do this, I'll right click on the global interaction, choose edit definition, and under the advanced option group box, disable the enforce common nodes between touching boundaries. I will have the other options at their default and click OK. Adding interaction will be easier if I explore the model. I will expand the for analysis configuration in the configuration property manager. Then click on the exploded view and select explode. The only remaining contact type to add is the bonded interaction between the edge of the center link and the face of the screw. To add it, I will right click on the component interaction folder then select local interaction. Choose bonded as the interaction type from the drop down. Then choose the edge of this uh, center link. Switch to the next selection box and choose the end face of this screw. When I click the green check, the bonded local interaction is added to the simulation tree. In the next video, I will walk through how to apply three pin connectors to the model. In addition to adding a spring connector between two components. With the contact types added, I will begin adding pin connector to the study. 
which replace the connector seen in the default configuration. To begin adding pinning, I will right click on the connections and select pin. The first pin will connect with the shaft in ARM2 to the hole in center link. First, I will select the shaft on ARM2 and then select the hole in the center link. There are some additional options shown here that I want. Under the selection box, there are two checkboxes available. The first one with retaining ring will keep this analytical faces from translating auxiliary relative. I will keep this enabled so the two parts don't translate auxiliary. The other checkbox with key eliminates axial rotation of the two cylindrical faces relative to one another. Since I want these components to rotate about this pin, I will leave this checkbox unchecked. Further down in the property manager, I will enable the strength data. This allows me to input the geometrical and material properties of the pin if they are known. The tensile stress area is determined by the cross code area of the pin, which I will set to 3.24 and make sure the units are mm square. The pin strength designates the design strength for the material of the pin, which is typically the yield strength. For this pin, I will enter this 3516 five zeros and make sure the units are set to Newton meter square. As opposed to Newton meter millimeter square, then I'll set the pin safely, say, safety factor to 2. Lastly, I will change the material type. and set it to AISI1020 steel. I'll click the green check and the pin connector is added to the simulation tree. Now I'll add two more connectors. I'll create a new pin. And the second one will connect to other shaft. With the hole on top of clamp 2. Once again, I will enable with retaining ring and disable with key. For this pin strength data, I'll set that tensile strength area to 7.06 mm square. Enter the same pin strength. Make sure it's set to Newton meter square and keep the factor of safety at 2. I'll change the material to AC1020 for this pin as well. And I click the green check to complete the second pin. I'll need to add one more pin. This pin will connect the shaft of arm 1 to the bottom hole of clamp 2. I'll set the same option at the other two pins including the two type options. The material and the strength data with the exception of changing the tensile stress area is 1.26 mm square. The last connection I need to add is a spring connector. This accounts for the effect of a spring used in the real model which will apply the uh, appropriate forces on the components. To add this spring connector, I will right click on connections and choose spring. I will leave the type set to compression extension and choose to connect the spring between two locations. The first vertex of the spring will connect the top of the hook tab along arm 1 to the inner face inside the hole of clamp 2. In the option group box, the first numerical entry box allows me to define the axial stiffness of the spring, which I will set as 250 Newton meter. At the bottom of this group box, I can add a tension uh, preload force to the spring. I'll change the option from compression to tension, then set the value as 5 Newton. Now I'll click the green check and the spring connector is added. Now that all of the connectors have been added. In the next video, I can move forward applying external loads, meshing the model and running the analysis. Then I will uh, assess the result of the model internal stresses as well as the forces placed on the stress.
with uh, all of the interactions and connector defined in the model, I can set up the reminder of the static study. The next step is to apply the extended loss to the model. A 100 Newton force will be added to the top face of arm 2 as well as the bottom face of arm 1. These forces must be created separately since they will be acting in opposing directions. I will right click on external loads in the tree and choose force. I will select the top three faces of arm 2 and to have uh, a forces applied vertically. I will need to select a direction then expand the feature manager tree in the graphic area. And select the top plane to make the forces normal to it. Below where I selected the top plane. I will enable the option total to that the force that is applied in the total amount across all of the faces. In the force, I will enable the last option to set it 100 Newton. If needed, I can click to check post to reverse the direction. This setting look good. Also, I click green check to add it. The other force acting on R1 will be applied to the cylindrical face shown here. I'll create another force. Select the cylindrical face. Choose select direction. Use a top plane once again. Enable the last option in the force group box. Give it to value 100 Newton. Make sure the force is applied in the right direction and click the green check. Next I can move to mesh the model. I'll right click mesh and choose create mesh. Change the mesh parameter to standard. Then change the global size to 0 0.06 inch and the tolerance is 0 0.003 inch. So the density is fine. Under mesh quality, I'll make sure a high quality mesh is being used. Then I'll click the green check to create the mesh for the model. All of the setups are in place, so I'll go ahead and run this study. The study may take a moment to run, so I'll skip ahead of the finished results. Taking a look at this test plot, I noticed that the internal stress greatly exceeds to yield strength. To make it simpler to view which points the model exceed the yield strength, I change the chart setting to apply the yield strength as the maximum value. To this, I right click on the stress plot in the simulation tree and choose settings. Uh, within the setting, I'll click on the definition tab to change the units to megapass. Then the chart option tab, uncheck the box for automatically defined maximum value and set the maximum value as a yield strength which is 248.17 megapascal and click the green check while examining the plot i noticed that there are several areas which stretches above the yield strength some of these are sharp corners are singularities such as the spring hook on the main gap i want to focus on where yielding might occur which is at the line contact on the center link you can see that the problem area is where I defined the line contact between the center link and the screw. The concentration of stress is an unreal distribution and the impact of the rest of the stress distribution could be minimal by refining the mesh in the size. Lastly, now that I have simplified the analysis by expressing the pins, I want to extract the pin forces that display the resultant forces on all of the pins. I'll right click on the results folder and select list connector force. I'll drag the property manager out to the right. And four forces are listed for each connector joint with eight forces total for each connector. Notice that the middle pin connector joints are shown in, in green, while the top and bottom pin connector joints are shown in red indicated that they are not properly dimensioned. This is due to the high level of shear force causing pin connectors 1 and 3 to fail. In order to keep the model from excessive deformation, the center link would be need to have in geometry modified where it comes contact with the screw which would reduce stress on the 
Additionally, two of the pins would need to be made stronger in order to withstand to high stair forces placed on them. This could be done by making the pins larger or by changing their material.